Hey everybody, it's Angie. And today I just wanted to do sort of a public service announcement um, regarding sunscreen. If you watch any of my skincare videos, you know that I am now religious about using sunscreen on my face and hands, neck and chest every day. But I was not so religious about it. And as a matter of fact, I was a burn, then peel, then tan girl way back, you know, 35 years ago in my teenage years. And unfortunately, that damage is irreversible. The reason that I'm coming on today is because I'm seeing my dermatologist later today to have a little spot on my face removed. The thing is almost invisible. You wouldn't even notice it if you have been watching all my videos, but it's been there. And it is called an actinic keratosis. All right, now I have, let me come in close so you can try to see what it looks like. Um, it is right, see that little pink spot right there? Doesn't really look like anything, right? Um, it popped up nine months to a year ago. And <clears throat> for the first nine months that it was there, I was like, you know, what is that thing? First I thought it was a little pimple, then it didn't, you know, clear up and go away in a couple of weeks. You know, then I was like, oh, it's just a little dry patch, a little eczema, whatever. I left it. It took me nine months to finally go and see my dermatologist, which I did back in October, I wanna say, or November. And um, she was like, oh yeah, that's a little precancerous uh, lesion. I was like, what, precancerous? And she's, she was like, yeah, don't worry, only 2% of those actually turn into skin cancer. So she said, we're just gonna freeze it off with the liquid nitrogen and you'll be all set. Well, she did that and it's been about three months since then and it kind of turned black and scabbed up and fell off back then around Christmas time. But it kind of is coming back on the edges. So I think she just kind of did the middle and she missed a little bit on the edges. So I made another appointment to go in and I'm going to go in today and she's gonna look at it again and decide if it needs something more serious than the um, liquid nitrogen or hopefully it's just gonna need another zap with the liquid nitrogen and it will be gone. But I decided that I should show it to you now because you know, the general feeling about um, skin cancer is that it has to be a black and crusty and bleeding kind of mole. Something like this, I never would have suspected that it had anything to do with skin cancer. So I just wanted to show you that if you do have something like this, you should have it checked out. If you have anything weird that pops up on your skin anywhere that doesn't go away in, you know, a month or so, you should probably have it checked out. I know there are some younger people who watch me. Um, my message to you younger people is no matter what you do for your skin and for your health, use sunscreen every day. You don't even realize what kind of damage the sun can do to your skin uh, going forward in the future. Things that you're doing to yourself now, your skin will heal up very nicely for now, but it will remember. And 40 or 50 years down the road, you'll end up with melanomas and skin cancers popping up. And actually there's currently a statistical rise in skin cancers in the younger set, the um, the 20 to 35 year old age group, they're seeing a rise in skin cancers currently in this day and age of knowing that you should wear sunblock because of people using tanning beds. So even if you think a tanning bed is a safe tan, um, don't go to a tanning bed. You can get some color on your skin, but you need to do it safely by using a broad spectrum UVA, UVB sunblock. Now, if you're my age or 35 to you know 80, it is never too late to start using sunblock, especially um, women if you are starting to use vitamin C serums or retinol creams or retin-A creams. Um, all the anti-aging products are very harsh on your skin and they make your skin extra photosensitive, which means that it causes your skin to react more severely to the effects of the sun. So it, it almost magnifies the sun damage. And while you can't do anything about your previous sun damage, you can limit your sun exposure now and hopefully, you know, help what you're going to end up with in the future. The rest of my service announcement is that I just wanted to show you some sunblocks. I did a previous sunblock video and a lot of viewers wrote in and said, you know what, they're allergic to the chemical sunblocks. Can you recommend 
um, a physical sunblock. The active ingredients that you're looking for, if you're looking for a physical sunblock, are things that end in I, like zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. Those are what you're going to find in the active ingredients labels on something that is a physical sunblock. But also make sure that it's a broad spectrum. It has to cover UVA and UVB radiation as well. So I just wanted to show you a couple of the things that I've tried lately. My standard everyday uh, moisturizer with sunblock block that I use now is the CeraVe and this is an SPF 30. I put this on my entire face, down my, um, underneath my chin, down my neck, whole chest and backs of the hands because I'm putting on vitamin C uh, serum in the morning and if you're using vitamin C, sunlight makes it uh, oxidize and break down. So you have to put a sunblock on like right away. Within five minutes of putting on your vitamin C, you should be applying your sunblock. So this is the one that I'm putting on currently and this is a 30. The last time I was at the dermatologist they had a big basket on the receptionist desk with all these free samples so I grabbed a few and two of the ones that I grabbed um, that day were this Aveeno one and this one from Eucerin. Now these are both SPF of 30. Of these two I like the Eucerin, I did not like the Aveeno. Um, it goes on smooth, it's not greasy or anything, it sets up nicely but I didn't like the smell. This one has no scent. This also has no scent. This also has no scent. If you know me, I can't stand anything scented. So the Aveeno may be fine for you if you don't mind that scent. There are so many now. You used to not be able to get these or else they were really expensive. Um, or else it was the zinc and it went on white. Well, now they've managed to micronize the zinc to a level that you can put it on and it doesn't leave that white ghostly cast. So this is my Neutrogena SPF 70. This contains avobenzone, and that is the chemical sunblock. Now, I love this because it's so sheer and so thin. I carry one of these in my purse so that if I'm ever at my kid's game and we're staring into the sun, I'm like, oh, good, I have it, so I just put it on. Um, you know, and I also have a hat with me now, and I'm very good about it. But <clears throat> this, any mineral uh, primer or foundation that I try to put over this, it balls up and rolls off. So if I am using a mineral foundation or a mineral based um, primer now, I can't use this because they don't play well together. So in that case, I have to use a mineral or a physical based sunblock. Now the last product I wanted to show you is Clarins Tinted Sunblock. And I thought, oh my gosh, could that be the holy grail product that I am looking for? So I squeezed a little bit on my hand and I loved it on my hand. Oh, I was like, oh, it's so soft, it, you know, it doesn't smell, it's you know, really terrific, and it's got an SPF of 40. And this is also a physical sunblock. When I was at Macy's yesterday, I stopped by the Clarence counter and asked for a sample, which um, Unfortunately, I haven't tried yet because I didn't want to put on really any makeup um, so that when I, when I go to my dermatologist, she can see my little thing and, and get at it. But I figure she'll just, I put on some blush, so she'll just clean off that spot. But I didn't want to put on any foundation or anything, so I'm going to try this tomorrow. But it was great on the back of my hand, and if this is terrific and the holy grail, you bet I'll do a separate glowing review on it. Okay, so um, that's it for today. I just wanted to say... Please, 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 if you do one thing and one thing only for your skin, it is um, keep it out of the sun, whether it's by wearing a physical or chemical sunblock or by putting on a hat or whatever. Don't forget your hands because there's nothing that says old lady like uh, the backs of hands that are covered with age spots. It's never too late to start in your everyday life. It doesn't matter if you live in Seattle where it's raining, uh, you know, most of the year you should put on something like an SPF 15 anyway throughout the winter and the cooler months. Once summer comes, you need to bump it up to a minimum of a 30. So um, that is my message for today. And you know, I, I really, I care about my skin. I care about your skin. And with skin cancers being on the rise, this is the one thing that you can do to prevent that no matter what age you are and no matter what level of skin damage you have. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and take care. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.